Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Mobox, and in this graphics tutorial video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to morph objects in After Effects. So before we learned how to do shapes, and in this tutorial, it's gonna be objects. So these objects could be PNG images that you find online, or rasterized images um, in general, or they could be part of a video, if that's what you're into. So we're just gonna go ahead over here and open up After Effects. So um, this tool, uh, or this tutorial, should show you a number of different things um, that'll help in other projects as well. Um, I show you how to how to auto trace and stuff like that. So we're just gonna come over here and create a new composition, T007, and this is like the fifth time I've done this. Um, if you're curious about whether these tutorials are in order, um, they're not. This one is being done well after tutorial 12. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna, yeah, these looks good, 1080p, 60 frames a second, um, 10 second composition is fine for this application. So I'm just gonna come over here, create a new solid layer as the background. And we'll do, should we do white or should we, yeah, maybe we'll do a light background, just, I don't know why, we'll just do that. And we'll go ahead and lock this layer and we'll shy it so that way it doesn't get in our way, we can't grab it. So I'm just gonna come up to the desktop here and I'm gonna drag these two PNG images into After Effects. And you notice they're PNG because the background is, there's nothing back on the background. I'm just gonna drag these into the project folder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this apple morph into this, this bottle. And we're gonna be using, we're gonna be using a slightly different um, trick than we did previously with the shapes because shapes have path information. And these bottles in Apple don't. Um, and the reason is, is because, I mean, when I zoom in, you'll see that, that they're not, like they, I guess, how do I say this? They're not vector images or they're not shape layers. So they, they you know, the edges are rough. Um, so yeah, that's what differs these two tutorials. And this background, I'm kind of not really digging this, this light background. I'm actually just going to unshy this white again and kind of make it um, a different color. So effect, generate fill and we'll make it maybe a darker color I thought maybe the white would look good but it doesn't so um, I have these two layers um, right where I kind of want them to be I want the apple to be kind of at the bottom and I want it to morph into the bottle so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this apple and I'm going to go to layer auto trace and these settings look good essentially what this does is it automatically traces around the apple um, because it is PNG so I'm just going to open up this mask by pressing M on the keyboard. You notice it created a new layer. Um, I'm just gonna delete that keyframe. I'm gonna copy the mask and I'm gonna paste it onto the apple. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete that uh, trace layer. So now this should have the mask and it's on add. And that's exactly what I want it to be. I'm just gonna rename this mask to apple mask. Um, and now I'm just gonna do the same for the bottle. Click the bottle, layer, auto trace, okay. Press them on the keyboard, kill that kill, kill that keyframe, um, copy the mask, paste it onto the bottle, and then delete that ray traced um, layer. I'm just gonna press them on the keyboard to get my mask up here. And this one was, was set to difference. Uh, we want this to be on add as well. So we just change that to add and we'll rename this to bottle mask. So, all right, now we have all of our masks that we're gonna need for this tutorial. Um, now there's an effect over here called reshape. So just search for reshape and essentially what this tool does is it allows you to select two masks and have the object um, morph into the, from one mask to the other mask. Um, and it also, it like drags the actual texture as opposed to um, just expanding the mask. Whereas if we wanted to, let's say grab this mask, you know, we can't really do anything with it. We can cut out the apple, but we can't expand it. Um, so th that's kind of how this differs from um, doing it with the shape layers where, where with paths, you can have the path morph, um, but in this you can't. So I'm selecting this apple, by the way, I'm just gonna lock this background again, right there. So now that we have this reshape mask on the apple, we'll actually just invisible, make the bottle invisible as well. Um, so we have the mask here, we're gonna come up to source mask and we want it to be the apple. Oh, one thing we forgot. We need to copy the bottle mask from the bottle and paste it on the apple as well. So that way we have both masks and we'll just change this to none. Um, changing that to none essentially makes it so we have the information, but it actually doesn't have any effect on the on the layer itself. Um, we just need the information because we need the apple to transform into the bottle. So we select the apple and the destination mask will be the bottle. Um, so you notice that we got this 
like string that came up. And essentially what that is, is that's a correspondent point. Essentially what it says is that part of the apple is gonna morph into that part of the bottle. And you could add many more corresponding points by holding Alt and clicking the apple. So I'll show you. Click the reshape, hold Alt, and press on the apple, and it created another corresponding point. So the more cor correspondent points, the longer it takes to actually render the scene. Um, but you'll find that it's it's a little bit it's a little bit better if you if you give it if you give it enough information to kind of morph in the way that you want it to. Um, for example, if you have an animal with arms morphing into a different animal, you probably want the arms to morph to where the other arms are, um, as opposed to um, you know the arm morphing into the head or whatever. Um, so it's really up to you. So I'm just going to set some correspondent points here, and uh, that way the apple kind of knows that I want the the bottom left to go to the bottom left. And I want the bottom right to go to the bottom right, um, just like that. So we can put some more if we want. Um, we might want, for example, we could probably just, just utilize this one, um, this uh, correspondent point, because we don't probably need that many um, around the whole figure. So we'll just kind of, I want this top of this apple to kind of morph into the top up there. And then maybe have um, that indent in the apple kind of be, um, represented or morph into this indent here. Maybe that could be interesting. Um, you just gotta kind of play with it, but you gotta remember where you put your correspondent points because you're gonna have to make the bottle morph into the apple as well. So um, now that we have the apple here, uh, we just can change some of these settings. So stiff, I don't like stiff. Stiff basically um, makes it so it, it's, it's, it's very rough and, and very rigid and I, I kind of like liquid or loose a little bit better. It kind of makes it a little, a little more friendly or a little more fun. And then interpolation, I like to make this linear. That way it doesn't jump around. It doesn't have to interpolate too much between frames and make too many mistakes. So we're just gonna start this off at 0%. Um, and we're gonna set a keyframe at one second. We're gonna go to three seconds. I'm gonna set this to 100%, see what we get. So there you go. Now, if you play it back, you can see that the apple morphs into the bottle. We'll just lower the resolution to half, make it a little bit, render a little bit faster. And you see that the apple turns into the bottle. So basically now all we need to do is basically do the exact same thing onto the bottle, but make it turn from an apple to the bottle shape. So we're just gonna add the same reshape. We're going to do the same masks. So we're gonna, oh, we need to copy the apple mask. I did the same mistake twice. Copy the apple mask, paste it on the bottle, change this to none. We just need the information. We don't actually need the bottle. We're gonna have it start as a bottle. We're gonna have it turn into an apple. And we're just gonna do the reverse. So we're gonna reverse the keyframes. I'm gonna change this to loose and change this to linear. Um, you could also do super fluid. Doesn't matter, it's kind of up to you. Um, but a big thing that you wanna make sure is that you put the corresponding points in the similar spots. So we're just gonna click that. Oh, we're actually gonna make this apple layer invisible. I wanna make this bottle layer visible. Um, that way it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna click here. I'm gonna just more, move the correspondent points into the correct location, um, as similar to the previous as we can. And the reason why we're doing that is that way the apple and the bottle kind of both morph e at, at equal rates um, in the same, I guess, moving moving to the same position. So you'll, you'll know what I mean. It, it just, it's better when when the correspondent points kind of match up better. I'm just gonna go around here and just move around the correspondent points um, so that way they're as similar as possible to the other apple layer. So we had some up here, I believe. Just set those and then we had some in the middle here. Um, now with this tool, you sometimes create um, create points, which you don't, you don't wanna do that. Whenever you do that, you wanna hit Control Z and delete the points and uh, try to add a correspondent point again. So I'm just gonna drag these down into the correct spot. So now that the correspondent points are in place, now we can start messing with the um, percentage. So um, I'm gonna press U on the keyboard on the Apple so I can see those keyframes. And I'm just gonna set a 0% there. And I'm gonna set this at 100% here. So basically now what we have is we have the bottle morphing into, or the, the apple shaped bottle um, morph into the actual bottle. I'm just gonna press you on the keyboard here. I'm just gonna line up these keyframes. I'm just gonna zoom in here, just make it a little bit easier. 
And uh, yeah, that looks about right. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want this Apple top layer to slowly change its opacity down until it's completely invisible and it's then a bottle. And that way it kind of gives, gives the effect um, that the Apple is turning into a bottle. So you'll see here as we, maybe I'll just do a RAM preview. It's going to be slow. So how you notice when the correspondent points aren't perfect, you get you get uh, bleed out around this, the edges of the object. And you don't want that. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and we're just going to try to figure out which correspondent points um, need to be altered slightly so that way we don't have that type of issue. So I'm going to change it on the bottle one because that was the second the second item that I that I was messing with. And I'm just going to go back and forth until I can kind of see where the correspondent points were. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and make these perfect. Okay, so we're back. So what we're going to do here um, is we're just going to move this opacity item down to about there. And we'll then create an opacity on the bottle. And basically what we want is we don't want the, the initial apple to have any sign of the bottle behind it. But we want the bottle to become visible really quickly. So basically this is just going to have the bottle um, come into a come into effect, you know, after about a second. So that way, you know, as as opposed to being able to see the bottle a little bit there, which is totally fine, um, you don't really want to see it when you're all the way down here. Um, it, you know, if the opacity was 100, um, you could kind of start to see the bottle behind. So, yeah, that's just a quick look at how to morph shapes in After Effects or objects um, in After Effects, not shapes. Um, again, two different techniques um, that you know, obviously shape layers and discrete PNG images, um, kind of a little bit different, but overall, I mean, it's kind of important to know both and both kind of do, do things a little bit differently. They require different techniques, but it's really the only way um, to get the effect that you're looking for. So why would you ever want to turn an apple into a bottle of apple juice? Who knows? Um, but if you ever find yourself needing that, um, I hope this tutorial helped um, you out at least a little bit. Anyways, guys, it's been Mike. Thanks for watching.